Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called music reviews. Funny thing about okay, music. Okay, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. First off, that's the wrong album. That's Let's Go Crazy from Purple Rain. You know, the album Purple Rain. Second, uh, Anthony Fantano of The Needle Drop. I already stole that joke from you because he did it while reviewing Purple Rain. Because that's from that song, I'm Purple Rain. Not this album. And third... This, this, this is just disgracing my memory. I can't believe you're doing this right now. God, you don't have to be so mean. And like, like, look at your shirt. Like, I get it. It's purple. Like, mad respect. But like, it says I Heart New York. Shouldn't it say like, I Heart Minneapolis, Minnesota? Or like, Minnesota? Like, either one of those would work. Because, you know, it's where I'm from. The Prince. It's where I'm from. It's the only purple shirt I had. What do you want me to do? You can't see. It's like you can't even see it. It's like, I, I'm gonna sit there. You can't even fucking see it. Look, see, I'm even I heart Minneapolis or Minnesota, both of them. Shout out to both of them. Peace sign because of the album. Then I. Hey, everybody. Tuning into Channel BK, Brian. Second classic album review, second week in a row or second time this year, fuck! And welcome to said album review. And this one is for the Prince album, Sign of the Times. Prince, Prince, the, the all fabulous Prince is a legendary guitarist, multi-instrumentalist, duh, singer, songwriter, R&B, pop, funk, soul, icon. He, he's done a lot of shit, okay? And this is also the ninth studio album of Prince, and I know a lot of people are probably wondering, classic reviews, Prince, what about Purple Rain? I understand, I love Purple Rain. Purple Rain is an immaculate record. I love it so much. It was probably the first record I heard of his growing up. It was the first one I loved. I mean, like, come on. I mean, like, come on. Like, who, who doesn't love Purple Rain? Like, who doesn't like this godly album? But the main reason why I chose to pick Sign of the Times was mainly because of where it stands in Prince's catalog. Once I finally got around to listening to other albums of his as I got older, this album kind of stood out to me a little more. Again, I love Purple Rain. I think it's one of the most iconic albums of the 80s. But we're gonna go to the end of the 80s to this album, but obviously leading up into that point, you know, he had the album Around the World in a Day, which wasn't received as well, and then we got to something like Parade, which was another soundtrack album that Prince did for a movie, and that sort of brought him back. I love that album a lot. Some of my favorite songs of Prince's are on there. But then we get to Sign of the Times, which is so Prince in every fashion. So the album itself was actually a combination of three different projects. Obviously, I think if you guys know Prince, you obviously know this. I'm just saying it because it's a review and I just love talking about it. So he was working on a Revolution album called Dream Factory. He was working on a solo album under the name Camille, which was like a weird experimental album where he was gonna sing from the viewpoint or in the standpoint of like a woman. He was gonna pitch his vocals and it was gonna be very interesting. And so those two projects got scrapped. He combined them for a three LP set, Crystal Ball, which Warner Brothers was not excited, and then he trimmed that down to Sign of the Times, to a double LP, and this is the album that we finally got right here. It's one of those things where like you listen to artists as you grow up and you hear all of these magnificent and wonderful things about them, and you, you sort of want to know why. It's not like a millennial thing or like a young people thing, it's more like you kind of want to know what is so infatuating about these people. And I knew before listening to this record, like I understood, but like listening to this record again and where he was at the time, this record and where it is in Prince's pantheon of work makes so much more sense. And I think it's probably his most important album when it comes to just the story behind it and all the things he did. Like it's such a interesting like diversion from a lot of stuff he's done in the past. Mainly with it being a double LP, I would be nervous because this record is not jumbled, but it is so over the place. But if it wasn't for the fact that pretty much every track on here works so well, I wouldn't really necessarily say that at this point. Like within the first disc, 
we go from like really depressing stuff about just the world. We get to like low key, like soft love making music. We get like really up tempo music, really funky tracks. Like this album just kind of throws everything at you. Now going back to the lyrics on this album, yes, of course, you're gonna get the Prince signature of just romantic kind of fun sex ballads or just like normal love ballads. Slow love, hot thing, the final track on here, Adore. There, there's a lot of either very blunt like we gonna do something tonight tracks and then there's also very like soft romantic tracks and sometimes both of those themes actually come together on the same song really well. But the obvious opener of this album doesn't really make you expect that this is going to be that type of album with the self-titled track Sign of the Times, which is really depressing because it like focuses on like these ideas of like hurricanes, like destroying the world and gang life and AIDS and drug abuse. And it's all wrapped into this very kind of moody, kind of funky track that just opens this album. And you're sort of just like, this is one of the most like somber, depressing things Prince has ever written. But then we get to something like Playing the Sunshine, which is a complete flip on the other end. And I think it's a very nice change of pace, which this song is literally just upbeat, trying to have fun. That's literally the purpose of this song. I think there's a great guitar solo near the second half of this track as well. There's a lot of great tracks on here with some really great guitar parts, especially on a song like I Can Never Take the Place of Your Man, which is one of the longer tracks on here, which sort of has a really nice guitar solo halfway through. And then it has like kind of a slower kind of moodier one near the end with just hi-hats in the beat. But this is a very straightforward, honest track. This is what I like lyrically a lot. It's sort of Prince viewing sort of this female in, you know, a bar. And it's sort of this idea that she is just getting over a breakup and she goes to Prince for some comfort. And it's this whole idea of like, he's pretty much bluntly saying like, you know, we can't be friends. We might be good for a one night stand, but I can just never take the place of your man and I don't want to do that. And I just love the sentiment of the song. But there's like a lot of really nice sentiment songs on here, like something like Starfish and Coffee, which the inspiration of the song came from his then girlfriend, Susanna Melovine. I know, please just fucking bomb me with terrible comments because I probably got her name wrong. I'm sorry, but she's fabulous. Which is sort of this really weird psychedelic like soft song. I love the pianos, the twinkling pianos on here. And it's about this girl named Cynthia Rose, who is this autistic girl that Susanna knew. And it's sort of this really interesting story about like what she would always have for breakfast. And it's like such a sweet moment. Like just the way Prince could put something together like this, obviously he had help, but just the way Prince could put together something like this is just really heartfelt. And I just really like the sentiment of it. But obviously with those kind of tracks, yes, you know, some of them are very similar to Prince's styles or, you know, they're very much like, wow, I've never heard Prince do this. But there are some tracks on here that obviously came from scrap projects or that were specifically made for this, that it's just so interesting. Something like it, which obviously the concept of the title of that song I find really clever. I just love the idea of just being very vague, but being very obvious about what it is. Love making. But like also the track is so upfront musically. It's just like these really hard hitting snares. And I also love the way he sings on here. Like there's another track called The Cross, which I will get into later, that he also just has these really harsh vocals but his delivery is amazing. And I think it just works so well with this song because it's kind of like this really just crazy sounding song. But then, like I said, something like If I Was Your Girlfriend, which obviously was made for the Camille project and he sort of rewrote it in a way, but the song is actually more so about him as a man sort of asking his girlfriend if she would trust him more if he was like her girlfriend like her best friend and this track goes through like this weird like it's a very mellow song it's very straightforward but like the second half or, or like the ending of the track just goes crazy like it's just prince going through these ideas of just like you know like something that's really sweet like this whole line where he's like we could just go to a movie and cry together like something that best friends would do but then near the end it starts breaking like you know like maybe we can do more than that but then like he always goes back to but if i was your girlfriend like i love like that's such a weird concept for a song and it's like again like you don't really know of anyone that can pull that off other than prince and then obviously we got you know some central tracks and obviously in a lot of different ways slow love which is very much like me imagining sitting in like a dark sort of like jazz club, great horns, great strings on here. And it's sort of Prince singing to this girl again. It's we, we just want to make soft love. That's all we want to do. 
Let's take it easy. Then we get the hot thing, which is like this sexy, hard hitting, like dance banger. And just the way he kind of croons over this and then the added saxophone in it was amazing. And then we got to You Got The Look, which is one of my favorite kind of combinations on the album. I love the 808s mixed with like Sheila E's great drumming on it. And then again, like, Prince has those like up pitched vocals, which is something I kind of forgot to mention at the beginning that that was something he experimented a lot on this album, which he does quite a bit. But like his vocals mixed with like Sheen Easton's vocals that are just these great harmonies on the hook and they sound fabulous. For some reason, the combination of your body's jamming, your face is hecka slamming. Like, I can't help but, like, not dig that. Like, that's just so slick and, like, so fresh. But again, this is another one of those songs where it's like, you look hot. Let's get to work. You know, at this point, I'm just throwing out random songs. Like, Housequake is a very straightforward, like, sort of funky James Brown-inspired sort of track where it's just him hyping up a party. I love the really heavy bass drum that starts the track, and then I love the guitars that kind of join in after. Something like the Ballad of Dorothy Parker, which the story behind this I love so much when he was engineering it with Susan Rogers, and how there was like a failure with like the equipment and all that, and also because it was the first time they were using it on new equipment, like recording songs. But like the murky sound of it fits really well. Like it it kind of grew on me a bit. Like it's a really just intriguing sound for a song like that. Again, like all like the really romantic songs on here, I love how he just goes to like all these different places of how you can make a love song and they all work really well. It's gonna be a beautiful night. The second to last track, which is sort of a live version of it with Sheila E's, as they call it. Let me let me read it for you. Trans Mississippi rap. Yes, because she recorded it on the phone on the other side of the Mississippi River with rapping Edward Lear's poem, The Chair and the Table. The Table and the Chair. My bad. It's just so much fun. And then one of my favorite tracks, probably my favorite track on here, The Cross, which kind of brings the tempo down again and it's really depressing once again. This track is very simple. It's just lone guitar. It builds with drums throughout it. But I love Prince's vocals. It's super moody. I love sort of the imagery of God on this track and how he's feeling hopeless, but he's there and you have to believe in the cross. And then when the drums just really kick in and the guitars just hash out and he, again, just like these violent sort of harsh screaming vocals that just work so well because he just does it so well. But obviously after that contrast, it's going to be a beautiful night and the cross, we get a door, which is the final track. Again, super simple, kind of classic sounding Prince with just great horns mixed in it. I love the sentiment of the track, as always. You know, the line of like, God, if God struck me with blindness, I would still be able to see your beauty. Like, come on, Prince is hella slick. Honestly, I'm glad I got around to listening to this album because obviously once I went back and dug through Prince's catalog, this was the album that I heard so many people talk about and I was so excited to hear like, what is this album gonna bring to the table and I think this was the record that you know even though I agreed Prince is one of the greats this album I think cemented it for me it's just this great diversity great lyrics great subject matters I think Prince just has such a great way with sound and experimenting but also just his simplicity in words but also in a weird way like his really interesting concepts and stories he puts to that and just his mixture of just like you know kind of 8080 sounds and then live instrumentation and like these weird pitch vocals that he did on this album. I think it was a very huge success. And obviously at the time it wasn't, it, it did well, but it wasn't like that big success until later on down his career road that people started recognizing as that. And that's why I want to talk about it because I think yes, as much as many of his records are great and fabulous and all that, this record I think was definitely something special. So if you've never heard this record, um, please go listen to it and tell me what you think of it. And also, if you have, leave it in the comments below. Favorite tracks and all that fun stuff. If you liked, please like. As always, we're going to be continuing Classics Week. Obviously, tomorrow. Duh. So, definitely wait to check those out. But, um, if you guys had fun, please check out my channel for other stuff. I feel like every time I do one of these videos, I say different stuff at the end. So, whatever. There's no continuity here. But thank you guys all so much for watching. And thank you for tuning in to Channel BK. Peace out, guys.